from the previous video, we have our vertex shader code, our fragment shader code. We're trying to get this pipeline going. We now need to compile this code and send it down to OpenGL. And by compile, I mean literally take these strings, which I've wrapped in double quotes, a very ugly way of doing it, but take these strings, send them to OpenGL, and have OpenGL use them to render our triangles. If it works, our triangles will be green, red, green, blue, we're only turning on the green, so our triangles will be green. I externed the vertex shader variable. I need to do the same with the fragment shader variable there. So extern, const char star frag. I'm not even, I'm just going to copy this. Copy, paste, put that there. We have our send data to OpenGL function. We've been through that several times. And now we have install shaders. In here is where we need to take these strings, compile them, and send them down to OpenGL. Now before, when we were doing our objects in OpenGL, remember we did this generate buffers, which generates a quote, unquote, object, an OpenGL object. And to set properties on those buffer objects, we have to say bind buffer and then send the buffer data down and that sort of thing. Well, we need to do the same with shaders and programs. We need to create OpenGL objects, much like objects we're used to dealing with and an object-oriented programming, but instead of us keeping track of those objects, OpenGL will manage those objects, and for us to do anything with those objects, we have to do it through the OpenGL API. Let me see if I can demonstrate. GL, create, shader. Right, this is how I'm, I'm essentially going to quote-unquote instantiate a shader object. It needs to know what type. It takes a GL enum. I need a vertex shader. Okay, you can think of this as an enum, however, it's just a pound define. If I click on it and hit F12, you'll see it's pound defined to this value. We pass that in, and Create Shader knows that we want to generate a shader object. I'm going to move this to the right, and, and here, here we go. Here is our vertex shader object. GL Create Shader, it returns a, a uint, a GL uint. So I'm going to say GLUint vertex shader ID gets GL create shader. Uh, we need a fragment shader object as well. Let me, I'm actually going to bring this down a little bit. There we go. GLUint fragment shader ID. And again, these IDs are just for us to refer back to OpenGL and say, hey, you know that shader object I created? I want to do something with it. GL create shader. But this time, I want a fragment shader. Let's just draw that here. Our fragment, fragment shader object. Now we need to send our code down for both of those objects and tell OpenGL to compile it. So, hey, GL shader source. Okay, what shader are you talking about? This, this function I'm calling here is like a setter function for my GL shader objects, my vertex shader object or my fragment shader object. One of the properties on here, on either one of these objects, is the shader source, the source code, right? the string, essentially. And I want to set that property. I have to pass the ID of the shader I want to set that property on. So I'll say vertex shader ID, which is the ID for our vertex shader object. Uh, the count here, so this is where it gets kind of interesting. It wants a GL char star star of strings. I can pass it an array of pointers to character strings, and essentially what OpenGL will do is concatenate all those strings together and pretend it's, it's one string. Well, that's all we have is one string here. And I failed to mention, actually now that I look at it, this, I'm using an interesting trick here. It's a C++ trick. When you do a string literal and then another string literal and a string literal, you know, I, in C Sharp or Java or other languages, we get used to concatenating strings using the plus sign. However, plus, we have to overload the operator and actually use a C++ string and a whole bunch of complicated stuff. I'm just using raw character strings, no objects here. Well, if you just put string literals next to each other like this, the compiler will just concatenate them for you at compile time. It's like I wrote all this code in one big long character string. 
Anyway, GL shader source needs that character string, but it's, ex it's expecting a char star star or an array of strings, and all we have is a char star. So what I'm going to do here is say char, uh, I'll call it adapter. It's going to be a char star adapter of one. All right, I'm defining an array of character pointers. If you need to go watch the C++ pointer videos, do. But essentially, adapter here, the name adapter, it's a pointer itself to this array, which is just length one. And what can that array contain? Well, it contains pointers to character strings. So it's my way of adapting our char stars to what OpenGL wants with this GL shader source call. And I say uh, there's strings here. So watch what I'm going to do. Adapter. Adapter sub 1, or not sub 1, sub 0, its length is 1, but its first element is sub 0, gets vertex shader code. All right, here is, I'll even draw it here. Here is our array of pointers. Okay, one pointer, there's only one pointer here, but it's still an array, and it will point to this character string. I just set in here. So adapter, the name adapter points to this array. The array is length one. It's length one of one pointer, and that pointer points to our character array. I could have several pointers to make this array longer, so on and so forth, but why overcomplicate it? Okay, so going back here, it needs to know well, how many, how, how big is this array you're giving me? Well, there's only one in there, and then here's the array, adapter. And then this GL int, it's, it's an array of lengths. It wants to know for every string we're passing in with adapter, what's the length? Well, I'm going to say zero there, which is actually saying, hey, it's I'm not passing a, a pointer in. It's the null pointer. Zero is the same as passing in the null pointer, which basically means figure it out. Okay, OpenGL, you figure it out, because I know the C++ compiler will put a backslash zero right here, a null terminator for my string. And so OpenGL, when you see that null terminator, that's the end of the string. I don't need to tell you explicitly. Now, if that null terminator is not there, I could tell it explicitly, but I don't have to. Ah, much ado about nothing. There's the source code for it. Adapter sub zero gets fragment. Fragment shader code. GL shader source. Let me give you the source for the fragment shader ID. One adapter zero. Same exact thing we did up here, but instead of doing the vertex shader, I'm doing the fragment shader. So now I've, I've essentially sent these two strings down. I've set those shader source properties for those shader objects that I've erased. Let me draw them back up here again. Vertex shader object, fragment shader object. And so now, now this vertex shader object knows that that's the string for its code, and this fragment shader object knows that's the string for its code. And now that they know their code, we can ask Scope and GL to compile them. So GL, please compile shader, uh, vertex shader. ID, GL, compile, shader, fragment, shader ID. So with both these steps here, OpenGL says, okay, okay, I'll compile these. That's good. And they could error out, but I just know this code is perfect because I wrote it before writing on, the, on this video here. I'll soon show you how to deal with errors, but for now, we'll just say the compile worked. Now, if you understand C++ compiling and linking, you know when you compile a C++ compilation unit, it outputs an OBJ file. And then the linker will take all of those OBJ files and link them together to create either an executable file, or it could be a DLL or a lib, any of those. It has to pull them all together. Well. Same idea here, we've compiled these shaders, but we need to link them together into a single program. So GL, create a program, returns a GLU int, you'll see right there. So I'll say GL U int program ID. Here's yet another object we're instantiating with OpenGL. So here is our program object or our GL program, whatever you want to call it. I'll, I'll say GL program or program object. And then in here we need to attach these shaders or these quote unquote OBJ files. They're not literally OBJ files, but the idea is still the same. These these compiled shader objects I need to attach this program and link them. So GL attach shader program ID. 
All right, to this program, I want to attach the vertex shader object. So that links this vertex shader with this program. All right, same idea with the fragment shader. GL, attach shader, program ID. I want to attach to this program my fragment object, my fragment shader object. So that line of code will attach this. All right, now we need to link them. GL link program. It takes one argument, the ID of the program to link. So here's the program right there. Program ID. Link it together. And link can fail, but I just ha so happen to know it won't fail. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'll show you how to check for linking errors later. And now I can say, hey, GL, use, use the program I created. Use this, this program ID. I can paste that right there, and we're good to go. This one little line of code installs our vertex shader and our fragment shader that we talked about in previous videos. So let's see if this works. Let's see if this works. I hope this works. If it doesn't work, I have to re-record this video. Control F5, build started. Hopefully the build will build fail. Of course the build failed. Cannot convert from, what was the problem here? Oh, I need const. Forgive me. Const. Build succeeded. Voila! Green triangles. Feeling so good. That's that's pretty cool. It didn't take much to uh to say, hey, uh, let's 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 get a basic hello world, basic pass through. This is kind of called a pass through shader because we're just passing the data through, not doing anything interesting with it, and out pops our green triangles. However, there's a problem. There's a problem. I said green here when we did get green. That's good, but. Didn't we, when we sent our data to OpenGL, didn't we say we wanted to use red? All right, remember this is one vertex right here. This is the positional information. And then this is the color, and we said red, no green, no blue. However, all we're getting here is green because in the, uh, in the pipeline, we didn't send this other data, and the other data needs to be the color. So in the next video, we're going to send that other data through, and then I'm also going to show you how to deal with uh, compile errors and linker errors with these shaders, because believe me, most of the time your shader code will not compile, and you want to see the error and fix that.